Hi, this is Corey, and you're listening to The Read, a substack from a different kind of podcast company. It's been a minute. I'm taking a minute because the construction that is taking place right next door to my studio has stopped for lunch. So I've got a moment to record a podcast. And also, you know, I've kind of been, you know, around and away. It, it was August and then September, but I've been busy heads down on something that I wanted to write about and uh, tell you about. Today's episode is entitled, Hold My Beer. Well, that is until the chat GPT renames it on me. A few weeks ago, I decided to redo our storefront. That is design a new website. Since 2013, I've been primarily responsible for our online presence. Though the team has grown and the company has changed quite a lot in those years, my position in the creative chair has not. When we started the company, I bought a web domain on (laughs) offer.com and grabbed a template from squarespace.com. They were both active advertisers on on a lot of podcasts I was listening to. So, you know, with my limited yet necessary experience working in the WordPress platform, it was apparent to me that I was way more interested in running a company than maintaining a website. Still today, not much has changed. I spent last year reorganizing our company, our co-founder and CFO stepped aside in October 2023, leaving a pretty big hole in our operations. I wrote about the shift from us hoping to sell our podcast agency to keeping ownership and making it a fulfilling workplace for myself and for our team. That spun us, though, into somewhat of an identity crisis. Who are we? How are we different? And who do we want to work with? Much of this self-reflection came from weekly meetings with Steve Pratt, the former co-founder of Pacific Content and the godfather of branded podcasting, whatever that means. Steve, regardless, is an author, consultant, marketing maven on paper and in practice. However, I see him as something more essential Steve is a gifted producer. Like Rick Rubin, he has that almost magical combination of great taste, honed instincts, and a singular ability to open space for an artist to create and experiment. Steve's a cheerleader and an upbeat accountability partner. Most importantly, he sees things in people that they can't see in themselves. I heard Rick Rubin in an interview on the podcast, uh, Feel Better, Live More. Love that show, by the way. I just started checking it out. Saying something to the effect that when we talk to people, they tell us their hopes and dreams and fears and values. When we ask them in the same conversation what their hopes and dreams and fears and values are, they say, I don't know. Yet, they always tell us through actions, words, and work. Through simply talking to us, Steve helped us see that we already know who we are and what we stand for. What matters next is what he kept saying and what I heard from many. I don't see any of that on your website. This feedback was a a running theme. Everyone said the same thing, from outside experts to inside contractors to clients and partners. The way you talk and work is nowhere to be found online. The only way I can discover who you are as a company is to work with you. Well, this disconnect only worsened. I, I hired branding expert Tara Kelly. She came in. As a, as a fractional content director, and worked with us on defining ourselves and our goals. Further, she devised this comprehensive, beautiful action plan for 2024, emphasizing making public our market position and what makes us different. It was like a morning light. Honest. Now we had two independent, qualified sources with the same diagnosis. 
Moreover, I knew what I needed to do next. So what did I do? Well, nothing. Yep, I, I put that all into a, a Trello board or Basecamp, Google Drive, somewhere on my Remarkable, or wherever one might bury the execution phase of a project. That spinning world of procrastination whose soil is excuses and water is complaints and the sunlight is wishful thinking. <laughs> there I sat while I wrote a substack and, and made a little About Me podcasts as if that would help. Well, guess what? Uh, that helped. I started making sales calls again. We have an outstanding accounts director, Paul. He's a warm cup of tea on the phone and a steady hand for clients who need to sort through the tangle of making new content for their company. However, I found that what he had to take door to door and what we were selling differed. Instead of updating his materials, I decided to hop on a few sales calls myself. I love this part of the business. For me, Talking to potential clients is fun. I mean, a lot of fun. However, with each conversation, I found myself making excuses for our website. It had become dysfunctional and dissonant, and it was personally and professionally embarrassing. There was no clear North Star for our clients or our team to look towards in the decision-making process, whether that be deciding to hire us or how to collaborate. No one was certain where they were coming to work each day. Enough was enough. I, I rolled up my sleeves, blocked off my calendar, and went to work. Sometimes the best work is isolated from the good opinions of others. I made a kind declaration to my team and my family that I'm heads down and unreachable for a while while I build a new place where we will go to work each day. It was what Johnny Page commented on LinkedIn, uh, became a, what the kids say, I guess, he's young, a hold my beer moment. Rather than update the old website, I simply started over. <laughs> I had a great head start and plenty of tools that made it very easy. We had enough from the brand work with Steve and Tara to formulate a framework market position. After months of blogging and podcasting about how we are different, I felt confident in how we talk about ourselves. Underneath all of that was the best thousand dollars we had ever spent. In 2016, we hired Jonathan Vio to redo our logo and provide us with a professional visual branding guide. That has stood up all these years later. So I started a fresh Squarespace account, picked a beautiful template, Condessa, by the way, if you're curious, and went to work. I was having fun. I was in the flow. We, we used to call that concentrating when I was young and showing my work to no one. Just a little side note here. When I'm in that state, I am like hypersensitive to any criticism or external suggestions. Fortunately, my life partner didn't ask to see it because she knows better. And our creative director <laughs> was conveniently on vacation. Plus, we were heading into the Labor Day weekend, so none of our clients and team were about to check in on me. <laughs> Guys, I fell in love and I've invited you to the wedding reception. I made it. It's beautiful. It's something that I take 10% credit for, as the people and platforms got me 90% of the way there. But that 10% is sort of the point. Nothing is built entirely from scratch these days. You know, were Podfly a web design firm, sure, hand roll the site to demonstrate our extreme capabilities. What I needed was clear. When you visit our site, I want you to, one, feel a certain way, two, understand who we are, and three, decide if you want to talk to us. It's, um, back to as the kids say, it's a swipe right. There still needs to be tweaking. 
I'm getting some great welcome feedback now. The biggest lesson here is not on, you know, execution and productivity and time blocking and branding, etc. It's directly from Cal Newport's new book, Slow Productivity. Do fewer things, work at a natural pace, and obsess over quality. I would add to that, have fun. Thanks again for the hang. I really like doing these. If you have some feedback, you can head over to podfly.net. That's where our new website is. And just message us and let us know what's going on in your brain. I think that I'm going to turn some of these ideas into short videos. So if you're cool with that, I'll uh, I'll post it on Substack and, and let y'all know. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your September. Because it's really still summer out there. <laughs>